Sonic, the heart of your system. What's up guys, welcome back to a, another DJ video. And yes, today we are taking a look at the Ryzen Tech Enyo case. Now this chassis is a behemoth, you can probably see here. I've got it facing around the back. This is actually the back of the chassis. I don't want to give away the front and the actual build just yet, just in case you haven't seen it on our Instagram or Facebook. So I want to keep that a bit of a secret later on. Now this is a chassis designed for extreme enthusiasts. As you can see, it's sheer size, uh, it's weight, uh, the radiator support, it will support four plus radiators and all that. So let's jump in and check out the case. The Enyo is a behemoth of a case, there's no doubt about it. The height and length are about the same as the Lianli V3000, coming in at 660mm high and 707mm deep. Then comes the depth, and this is what really sets this case apart from others. With a width of 400mm, you're really going to need some hefty desk space. The reason the case is so wide is the multiple cooling options available. The case really has two sides to it and cable routing goes in the middle. In this review, I'll mainly be focusing on the water cooling support the Enyo has to offer. As really, that's what this case is designed for. You'll be silly going for an all-in-one cooler setup with air-cooled GPUs. For those wondering, the Enyo does come flat packed and will take about 20 minutes to construct. This has been done to save on shipping costs. The case is well packed and the double-sided setup guide worked as intended. Material-wise, the whole chassis is made from a mix of aluminium and steel. I was actually quite surprised to see nice 3mm thick brushed aluminium being used for both the main panels of the chassis. It really doesn't show this off in the product PDF I received before the case arrived. 2mm thick steel is used for basically the remainder of the chassis, which includes all fan slash radiator brackets. You'll find these brackets situated at the top, front and side. Starting on the exterior, the Enyo comes with four tempered glass side panels coming in at 4mm thick. I'll say the tin on these panels is about medium. The two large panels are for each main side and the two smaller panels are for the front and the top. Front and top panel clearance comes in at just under 10mm which is going to limit air intake and exhaust. But I feel the case is designed in a way that you can have these glass panels left on or left off. Just bear in mind the Enyo comes with no dust filters at all. I appreciate the detailed work in the two larger side panels with cutouts at both top and at the bottom to give the case a more pleasing look. Each side panel is secured on by four large screws which do require an allen key. I would have preferred large thumb screws instead. The main bars that support the panels are made from steel and have a thick rubber coating on the outside. Moving on to the inside, you'll find motherboard support for basically any board around. Also, a good case choice for the new Asus ROG Dominus motherboard which has just been launched. The board I'll be using in my build is a standard EATX and even this looks small in the Enyo. To accommodate a large variety of motherboards, I like the cable routing options Ryzen Tech has implemented in the Enyo. Along the bottom and the right side are very large long cable holes with what I would say are some of the best cable grommets I've seen. And the fact this panel is made from thick brushed aluminium, you can decide to leave the grommets in or take them out completely for a more cleaner look. If using smaller motherboards, say ATX, there's an additional cable routing hole for SATA and the 24 pin cable is picked up via the CPU access cutout hole. The only issue I found was when using EHX motherboard, there is no proper cable routing for your SATA cables apart from going under the motherboard. As the Enyo can take server boards, Ryzen Tech has also done a good job for EPS routing. As not knowing where all possible EPS locations could be, the Enyo simply has a long cutout that runs along the top of the motherboard. You may have also noticed four round holes in the center of the motherboard tray. These are pre-drilled pass-through holes for your water cooling loop. Two holes for your CPU runs and two holes for your GPU runs. From what I've tested, these are located in a pretty good spot, but for my build, I'll be making my own holes. Off to the right of these holes are dedicated pump reservoir spots that will support up to two reservoirs. But keep in mind from what I can see, these locations are designed for Rajantech Atlantis reservoir combos. I tried reservoir brackets from other various water cooling brands and they did not line up. I would have loved to have seen some sort of bracket adapters included for third party gear. Kind of like how Fractal Design have with their S2 cases. Now let's move on to what you've been waiting for and that's radiator support. And yes, the Enyo can support up to five radiators at once. Four 480mm radiators and one 360mm radiator. Front you'll find support for up to a 480mm radiator with a thickness gap of about 85mm. Top you'll find support for up to a 480mm radiator with clearance of 100mm before hitting the motherboard. The front side radiator bracket can take up to a 480mm in either the top position 
or side mount position, but only one spot can be used, not both at once. Radiator thickness here is basically unlimited. We also found this bracket could have been made a bit stronger. Due to being able to support a radiator on the flat side, the bracket has lost a lot of structural integrity and I found it would sag quite easily. This is due to the spots highlighted in red being the only support hold in this bracket. The bracket wasn't sagging where it mounted to the chassis, but was more bending on these seven weak spots. I guess the only way for Rajin Tech to overcome this is to use the thicker material. I managed to fix this myself by adding a thick 3mm aluminium backplate to this whole area. I was actually going to do this anyway as I didn't want my side radiator blowing hot air up into my motherboard area and secondly I wanted to add some contrast to this area. By adding this brace it really strengthened up this bracket. Moving on to the rear side of the chassis there's support for up to a 480mm radiator on the side up the top and a 360mm standing up more towards the front. Radiator thickness for these are basically unlimited until you hit the tempered glass side panel. Just to note that only the rear 360 radiator spot is installed on a rail system which allows for some flexibility but all the other radiator locations are screwed in to fixed holes with minimal adjusting. The top and front radiator locations do have a double set of holes which allows you to favour the radiator to a particular end. Moving on to storage support, there are spots for four drives right at the bottom of the chassis behind the front side radiator bracket. Here there's room for four SSDs or four 3.5 inch hard drives. A major problem I found here was there's only screw holes for hard drives that have two rows of holes close together. If your drive only has the hole space furthest apart, your hard drive will not mount to the chassis. I did find when mounting a standard 3.5 inch hard drive, you will need right angle SATA connectors as the drives are mounted so close to the bottom. There's just no room for straight connectors. 2.5 inch SSDs can use standard SATA cables as they are installed slightly higher up than the hard drives. Lastly, if you're thinking there still isn't enough support for your gear, around the back you'll find not one but two power supply locations. Rubber pads are included that raise the PSU off the back of the chassis so PSU orientation can go either way, fan facing down or up. You'll also find nice cable cutouts that will send your PSU cable straight into the midsection of your case for routing to your components. One thing I would have liked and you'll find this on most cases that support dual power supplies is a secondary option when using only one PSU. As I feel most users will only use one power supply, this second spot is just going to be unused with no alternate use. Maybe extra storage options or pump mounts could have been added in these spots. Now for those who haven't been following this project on our Instagram or Facebook, sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy the completed build. So I must admit, I think the overall build did come out pretty good. Now I've got quite a bit of information to cover before I wrap this video up. Now in terms of weight and size, now yes, this case is big in all dimensions. 
and once it's full, it will weigh a lot. The case isn't too bad when it's empty, 21 kilos, but of course the case's size and this much radiator and cooling support, you are going to want to fill it up. And that's why I'm standing up here today with this tabletop on a wooden crate with wheels, because the only way I can move this from my desk onto here is by wheeling this whole assembly over, trying to sort of uh, push this onto the table and then wheel it back. So I haven't even taken photos of this case yet. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that because I do that in a completely different area. So I'll have to work that out uh, later on. Now, no doubt this is a water cooling monster, but it's really only for you guys who like open frame cases. Now I have left the top and the front off. To me, I wanted better airflow. Uh, for my environment down here in this room, dust isn't too much of an issue. Uh, I don't really live in a dusty area. So I've left it off for optimum cooling, but you can put those glass panels I mentioned earlier on but you will only have uh, restricted airflow coming in because the gaps are much, much, uh, much smaller than of course, just uh, having it off like that. Um, now, the case is very customizable. Uh, it'll be great for someone who's getting into modding, uh, who's into modding. I didn't really do much at all in terms of customization. I didn't want to alter it too much because I am trying to review the case. I don't normally hack them up and then review it and say, look, I made this really good. I just sort of left it as is, added some, uh, if you're wondering what these, the uh, back materials are that are overlaid over the standard material, it's just clear anodized aluminum. I've used it before on some builds and it just looks really good. And it adds some nice contrast with say like silver fittings. And when you have a black case, it does add that contrast as well. Now, some of the other issues I had, uh, middle cable routing is a nightmare. Now, you're probably not meant to put everything in the middle, but I decided to, I thought, what the hell, if it's a case with two sides, a case with two faces, why not try and put everything in the middle? Um, cables, yeah, you can probably get away with. I would advise using extensions. Uh, I use cable mod, uh, sorry, not extensions. I use cable mod uh, power supply replacement cables. I started off using extensions and the extra bulk from the connector joining in the middle was just too much. So I got replacements. That way I can just get a clean run from the device into the power supply. And then I decided, I thought, what the hell, I will try and get all the tubing inside. And it is kind of sort of wanting to push it out. Uh, so that probably is my fault. But in saying that, um, I do think the case could have been a little bit stronger in terms of the rigidity of these uh, two main sides. Because once I started putting a heap of gear on here, and then a gear on the back, they wanted to pull uh, the two sides apart. And then you got sort of this, uh, I'll throw up some B-roll to get some better shots of this, just some flex in the middle. So I do feel it needed to be um, a little bit stronger. Now, other areas, uh, the case will lean if you don't have all the glass side panels on. I obviously don't have them on now. Once you add them on, you're gonna get that sort of structural integrity back. But as you can see now, it is rather flimsy. Now, the main reason for that, one, I do believe it is the aluminum uh, used on here. And two, it would be these poles that hold the glass on. I think the top are fine, because technically they're not holding up the chassis, but definitely down the bottom here, they needed to sort of rethink and redesign these feet, because these are just seriously, like it's like a steel pole, uh, it's got rubber on the outside. I'm sure that that doesn't help with it flexing. And then it just goes through to like a cylinder and then another foot on the other side. I think they needed a triangular design. So it had like one bar here, one bar here, one bar here, more like a support you can like build benches with. So it just had that angular structural support so it wouldn't flex like this. Because um, on my desk, I don't really want to have the front glass panel on. Um, I'm always messing around with stuff, but I have the back one on, but it does have that little bit of a lean, which is a little bit annoying. And when it comes to building this case, I probably won't, uh, I can probably say now, I won't be doing a time lapse build on this uh, build, which is a shame because it would have looked really sick, but it just took me three people, including myself, so two other people, to get this build up and completed. Mainly because I put everything in the middle, I had to have this side, this one half leaning against a uh, wall so once you take this back bit off the case just wants to fall forward then i had to have the assemble of the back bit slide that on while connecting all the cables in the middle and then lastly the top 480 radiator bracket goes on and the front 480 bracket goes on last so you've got to try and have all your cables in the middle but then somehow connect all these fans and the water cooling as well at the same time so it does take a bit of a thought process to get this all going but um it can be done, 
Um, probably the way I, I did it was probably the most extreme and hardest way, but I have seen builds where you can just run all your cables and tubing out the back. You're probably meant to run your tubing out the back mainly because of the uh, four pass-throughs on the front, there is a cutout that brings them straight out to the back. Uh, another thing with the hard drives, I actually rotated my hard drives. I did mention earlier they do sit flat and just sort of slot in. I rotated my 90, so they sort of go like this, and I managed to fit six in behind this radiator, and there's still room for probably, I would say, four more. So if they did that, you could probably fit 10, and then they just screw in uh, two on each side. So they're just sort of slotted in. The only issue with that is uh, they're pretty close to this uh, front radiator, so thickness will be limited. You're probably not going to fit a 60 mil thicker radiator if you do have the hard drives rotated this way. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of the middle cable routing gap, I didn't mention that. I managed to fit, I had a fitting here, so I managed to fit all my tubing on the inside. The main issue I thought I was gonna run, run into was getting 90 degree fittings because you can't just have the pass-through go through and then have a straight tube coming out because it's gonna hit the back. So I managed to use a standard bits power uh, right, uh, right angle, you can't use a rotary because the extra rotary bit on the fitting will make it too large. So a standard bits power pass through, standard bits power right angle with no rotary segment on it will allow it to fit inside this chamber and then you can just run flex tubing in the middle. So that was one of my main concerns and the routing gap is about 30 millimeters. I would have liked that a little bit more, like once the case is together you don't even notice that gap. So maybe 50 or even 60 would have made it that little bit easier. Uh, one last thing is a second power supply spot, like you saw on mine, I threw in two SSDs there purely for really just aesthetics because I'm not, I'm not going to need two power supplies, I'm not sure who will. Like I got two 2080 Ti, 7980XE, uh, a monster motherboard, uh, six hard drives, two SSDs, five NVMe drives and this is a FSP, the water cooled, uh, not that that really makes much difference, uh, the 1200 watt water cooled and it runs all this fine. So probably don't need the two power supplies. So it would have been sweet, as I mentioned earlier, to have a different uh, purpose for that spot there, like maybe extra hard drives, like an e physically extra spots. I just stuck mine on with double-sided tape with something a bit of a better solution than that. Now that brings it down to price. You're looking at 369 US dollars, including free delivery to USA and Canada. Now that's not too bad. Um, anywhere else in the world, I know that Case King has it, so Europe and all that area, you're covered Australia and other parts. Um, good luck with that, because I'm pretty sure Rajatech uh, has no sort of presence in those areas. But um, this actually did come from Newegg, and I think shipping wasn't uh, wasn't too bad. So because it does come flat back, as you saw earlier, so yeah, shipping isn't uh, isn't too bad with that. But um, 369, like there are a lot of other cases that are definitely smaller, less feature packed, and do cost a lot more. So I think kudos for Rajatech for keeping the case down. And the actual quality is good. You've got like the brushed aluminium you saw. Uh, early on, you've got the massive radiator support, and it's a case where, where they say it fits five radiators, radiators, and it does. And it fits five radiators with ease. Now, I've used the heat killer radiators, they uh, sort of contrast nice with the black and the silver I've used, as they do have the mirror finish on them. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this uh, video. I want to thank Rajin Tech for sending this out. I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, video of the review on this case, and I'm just ashamed I can't get a time lapse uh, done on this case. But stay tuned, and thanks for watching.